Hello, I'm Science Gal. In this video, I'm doing a fractional distillation of the acetone I made in my last video. I would also like to thank Chemical Master 3267 for motivating me to complete this video. Now let's get started on the distillation. Before I start purifying the acetone, I start by greasing all the connections, and then I drop the stirrer and then pour the acetone into the round bottom flask and then assemble the set. As I pour the acetone, there's a really unusual smell, which is hard to describe, but it's probably best described as a weird eggy smell. Once everything was set up, I put on my protective eyewear, gloves, and turn on the power to start the distillation. Once the water has filled the condenser, I then turn up the stirring and heating. It was taking a long time to reach acetone's boiling point of 56 degrees Celsius, so I covered the bottom of the flask to insulate it with some aluminium foil to make it heat up faster, which actually resulted in protecting the flask from breaking as well. Here is the beginning of the vapour trail, soon after it was followed by drops. As the drops became more frequent, I put some aluminium foil over the fractional condenser to insulate it in order for it to heat up faster. It was at 52 degrees Celsius when the drops were finally reaching the thermometer. It was very exciting to see the first few drops of the purified acetone come through. Thankfully, the rotten egg smell did not come across as well. Instead, this acetone smelt more like the acetone you'd buy with a tinge of a smoked smell. Unlike no red experiment, I don't have a yellow tinge in my acetone. This makes me believe that my acetone may be more pure. Assuming that egg shells have more protein contamination than oyster shells. The dark liquid in the unpurified acetone flask I thought was acetone, as it had a strong distinctive smell. However, when I attempted to light it on fire, it would not catch on as it was not flammable. This leads me to the conclusion that all the acetone came across as well as a little bit of water. Once the temperature of the acetone reached 60 degrees Celsius, I then turned off the power and ended the experiment. Prior to purifying, I had 35 milliliters of acetone. However, at the end, I was only left with 25 milliliters. Now, finally, the real test. I have some acetone to use as a nail polish remover. At the end of the experiment, I decided to do a flame test. Once the flame went out, there were only little impurities left. Thank you for watching my video today. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.